Hello. In this recording, we're going to talk about the summary of economic survey. If you're preparing for different uh, MA economics entrances like Jamia, like Gokhale, Madras School, and some questions in JNU, you can have some part of Indian economy which can be asked. Now, GK is not something which can be prepared in a day or a two or in a week. No, I mean, it is built up over the time when you will read newspapers. But there is some part of it which we can control at least to give some satisfaction to our minds that yes, we have prepared something. So this is the least what we can do. The summary of economic survey. So let us try to do that. So I'm not asking you to learn all the data points. If you can at least just listen to it once. So you'll have something in your head and you will be able to mark that intelligently. So you can use this. This is going to be helpful to you. If you can write it very good, if not, at least listen to it. So economic survey starts by saying this, that the last two years have been very difficult for the economy this, uh, due to COVID pandemic. And uh, government has done uh, everything, whatever it can do, you know, to bring the economy back to the pre-pandemic levels, whatever it can do. And uh, the survey says that the... Uh, Economy is estimated to grow in real terms by 9.2% in the coming year. While in the last year, it contracted uh, by 7.3%, right? Uh, after the contraction. And all the indicators of the economy, they were reflecting this, that the first wave of the pandemic, it was more challenging for the economy as compared to the second wave. But as far as the health indicators are concerned, definitely we saw that also the second wave of pandemic was more uh, uh, severe as compared to the first wave. So as far as all economic indicators are concerned, the first wave of pandemic in which there was a, almost a complete lockdown, there uh, it was very, very severe. But the health indicators, they were more severe in the second wave. Survey says this, that GDP is projected to grow by 8 to 8.5% 8 in the real terms uh, in 2022-23. And it says this, that it is going to be possible because of the widespread coverage, uh, widespread vaccination coverage. There are supply side reforms which the government is taking up. And there is an export growth also, which we are seeing. We'll talk about the exports as well. The sectoral expo expected growth rate in 2021-22 it says it looks like this that agriculture is going to grow by around 3.9%, industry by 11.8%, and the services by 8.2% in the coming year. And what is the share of the uh, sectors in uh, nominal gross value added? So PE is your provisional estimates. And uh, your and AE is your advanced estimates. The share of agriculture and allied activities is 18.8% in 2021-22. Industry, 28.2%. And services, 53%. Prices and inflation. So there is something which is called CPI-based inflation. And there is another thing which is called WPI-based inflation. So when you look at the CPI-based inflation, it is the changes in prices for the goods and services which are brought, which are bought by the retail consumer, right? And there are several groupings in CPI. Like, for example, you have food and beverages, fuel and light, housing and clothing, bedding and footwear. These are different uh, subgroups. And there are different kinds of CPI also. What are the different kinds of CPI? CPI for industrial workers, CPI for agricultural labor, CPI for rural labor, CPI for uh, rural urban combined and so on. So out of this, the CPI rural, CPI urban, CPI combined, I mean, this is published by um, NSO, National uh, Statistical Office. Uh, while the other three, for example, CPI for industrial workers, CPI for agricultural labor, and CPI for rural labor. That is being published by Labor Bureau in, uh, in, in Ministry of Labor and Employment. Hmm. Then, as far as the base year of CPI is concerned, it is 2012. And 
for cpi industrial workers the base the new series has been published um, with a base year of 2016 keep these things in head and if you look at the survey it says this that cpi based inflation was 6.2% in uh, 2020 in 2020 uh, 21 and whatever inflation was there it was mainly because of the supply chain disruptions uh, there has been the increase in the international crude oil petroleum product prices higher taxes etc cetera, etc cetera. but the survey says this that if you look at uh, uh, the 2021 22 that is last year this year right this is your pandemic year 2021 22 it was just 5.2% so survey is saying that government has done enough to reduce inflation mm -hmm. so the decline was uh, mainly because of the food inflation has declined and uh, there has been and and the survey says that uh, there has been the effective supply side management there has been reduction in central excise and the subsequent cuts in vat by most by most of the states and this has led to the reduction in petrol and diesel prices and because of that the uh, the cpi which you are looking at it has reduced to 5.2% compared to 6.2% year earlier mm -hmm. then you have wpi based inflation so wpi based inflation is the changes in price of goods and services which are uh, sold which are bought and sold by the firms by the businesses not by the retail consumers so retail consumers are not buying uh, in bulk at these wp i mean the wholesale prices they are buying at the retail prices and uh, what they say is that this is published by the office of economic advisor ministry of commerce and industry and uh, and uh, wpi based inflation it, it actually rose to 12.5% in 2021 22 and they say this that this has been because the base year was very low low base year last year uh, there has been pick up in the economic activity so when there is an increase in demand of course the prices are going to increase sharp rise in international prices of crude oil and the other imported uh, inputs uh, so these inputs are going to be used in uh, in the production of uh, other goods and services and since there has been the sharp rise in the international prices of crude oil and the other imported inputs then of course the uh, wpi based inflation is going to be higher and there has been the higher freight cost also so this was about the prices and inflation current account balance so when you talk about current account there are several components of the current account trade in goods which is the visible balance trade in services which is the invisible balance then investment could be your dividends interest income etc uh, migrants uh, remittances from abroad could be international trade uh, so international aid uh, now when very loosely speaking so when the exports are more than imports you say that current account is in surplus when exports are less than imports you say current account is in deficit so in 2020 april to september current account balance was positive 34.3 billion us dollars so wherever i'm just using dollar sign means us dollar here and this this surplus would have been there because there has the there has been decline in imports uh, relative to exports but then when the economic activity picked up next year then imports they also increase exports also increase but of course imports they increase more than the exports and it led to the deficit of 3.1 billion dollars fiscal deficit governments borrowing are more than governments receipt or governments income so in april to november 2020 survey says that fiscal deficit was 135% of the budget estimates while in april to november 2021 this fiscal deficit has been reduced to just 46.2% of the budget estimates and this the survey says is because of the sustained revenue collections so the government income is increasing because of that deficit is decreasing and the targeted expenditure policy 
revenue receipts now revenue receipts are those receipts which are uh, which are not going to create any liability neither they are going to reduce the assets of the government right for example taxes so taxes are not something which is the liability of the government or the government has to pay it back uh, and uh, it is also not going to lead to the reduction of the government's asset also right so so for example they can be uh, government can also get receipts by the sale of its share in the public sector enterprises but that is not a revenue receipt that is not the revenue receipt okay now the revenue receipts of the government in april to november 2021 it gone it it went up by 67.2% over the over the previous year same period april to november 2020 and the government tax revenue also it registered a growth of over 50% during april to november 2021 so government is trying to portray that the government is receiving enough receipts and capital expenditure also grew by 13.5% during april to november 2021 its main focus was on infrastructure intensive sectors then you had debt in 2019-20 government's debt was standing at around 49.1% while in 2020 to 2021 59.3% and this increase in debt has been because of the increased borrowings during the covid-19 pandemic and then there are some more figures so like the central government total outstanding liabilities at the end of the march 2021 was 117 lakh crores while the public debt accounted for 89.9% of the total liability then let us talk about the external sectors if you look at the exports and imports of india um, last year we were able to match the pre pandemic levels not only match i mean we surpassed the pre pandemic levels and uh, there was this significant uh, pick up in the net in the net services sector and uh, both receipts of the payments they were also growing uh, in the pre pandemic levels also although there i mean whatever revenue we were getting from tourism that was very weak but still we were able to surpass um, the software and the business software earnings and the business earnings were that much that we were able to surpass the pandemic uh, pre pandemic levels in the first half of 2021 22 net capital flows were higher at around or uh, 65.6 billion dollars and this has been possible because of the there has been increased uh, inflow of the foreign investment there has been the higher uh, banking capital there has been the revival of net external uh, commercial borrowings there has been the additional sdr location allocation uh, so and india's external debt also it also increased right Uh, at the end of september 2021 it was 593.1 billion and this increase you saw because of the additional sdr allocation by imf and because of the higher commercial borrowings also while at the end of 2020 it was around 50 556.8 billion dollars us dollars foreign exchange reserves they also crossed uh, 600 billions in the first uh, 600 billion us dollar in the first half of 2021-22 and by the end of uh, december 31st 2021 uh, it touched around 633 billion us dollars and india became the fourth largest uh, foreign exchange uh, reserves holders forex reserves holders Uh, in the world after china after japan and switzerland if you look at uh, uh, india's mercantile exports hmm. exports they also recovered very quickly after the collapse in uh, the pandemic time and they also registered a growth a, a very positive growth in the current financial year compared to the last year the exports they grew by around 49.7% compared to last year compared to 2020 in 2021 they grew by around 49.7% in the absolute terms it is 301.4 billion us dollars 
and this growth has been there because of the high growth in the petroleum or petroleum and oil exports which you call as petroleum oil lubricant export as pol exports and not only in the pol exports but also in the non pol exports like non pol export pol exports are jewel, gems jewelry engineering goods etc these are mercantile exports this is not services so services will take up uh, separately uh, not only that during pandemic there was an increased demand for staples so the agricultural exports they also grew and they all they grew not only during pandemic they also grew during uh, the next year right and this has been possible because of the effective agricultural export policy of the government export destinations may usa is the topmost export destination followed by uae and china looking at imports in imports also india witnessed that of course there was the fall in imports during pandemic but again it revived and it uh, uh, india is seeing the strong import growth as well compared to the last year in 2021 mercantile imports they grew by 68.9% and uh, i mean in in the absolute terms it is 443.8 billion us dollars of imports compared to the last day so imports they are categorized into three categories very roughly speaking gold and silver imports non gold and silver imports and pol imports so gold and silver imports is 9.1% share pol imports is 26.6% share non gold and silver imports is 64.3% share and Service says that we have been seeing the positive growth in all the components of the imports. In uh, gold and silver imports, there is hundred nineteen point two percent growth compared to the last year because in the COVID time uh, there would not have been any growth, so it was it could have been because of the very low base, and it it was at hundred eighteen point three billion US dollars. while the pol imports and the non gold and silver imports together they grew at 49.3% compared to the last year and they were standing at around 285.5 billion us dollars so what are our different uh, import sources again china uae and usa are the top most import sources for india but the share of china has declined from 17.7% to 15.5% then monetary management and financial intermediation repo rate is the rate at which the central bank is uh, lending to the commercial banks right so that rate is maintained at 4% in 2021 22 so in case if that rate is going to increase that means the rate at which the central bank is going to lend to the commercial banks that rate is going to increase then central bank uh, commercial banks in their own capacity will be lending to the retail investors or the retail borrowers at the higher rate so at the higher rate of interest the investment is going to fall so but in case of the repo rate is maintained it has not been increased so it increases liquidity in the system RBI uh, took also various steps like GSEC acquisition program. So it's like an open market op open market purchase. Uh, so when the uh, RBI is purchasing the government securities, then it is giving money in return. So the money supply increases in the economy. So there is an increase in liquidity in the economy. Uh, and the economic shock of the pandemic has also been weathered very well by the commercial banks. And the uh, survey gives uh, some. Uh, some evidences it says this that if you look at year to year year on year bank credit growth then you will find this that uh, it was 5.3% in april 2021 compared to last year and it was 9.2% in december 2021 so it's it's a good thing the credit growth increasing means economy is picking up gross non performing advances ratio of the scheduled commercial banks it declined from uh, from 11.2% in 2017-18 to 6.9% at the end of uh, 21 uh, september 21 net non performing advance ratio it also declined from 6% to 2.2% so survey is trying to say the government is doing everything in its might so that economy could be brought back to uh, its pre pandemic levels right and even better than that uh, 
So the remaining uh, summary we will be discussing in the next uh, recording. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you, Beta.